Welcome to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're learning the process for safely flushing a plumbing system in a building that has been vacant or underutilized for an extended period of time. So let's get started with Steve Brightlow out at Plumbers 75. Well, Steve, it's been a while, but I remember this room. Yeah, good to be back here with another show, and this is our cross-connection and backflow control lab here. What these devices do is they separate and protect the public side of our water services from the consumer side. These protect the systems while the water is flowing. What we're talking about today is when water hasn't flowed for quite a while. And so now on the downside of these things, into buildings and facilities that have been shut down for a period of time, there's been stagnant water in them. So now we're talking about getting that flow going safely. We also got to be careful that the, the sewers are also dried up, the traps are dried. So if you have a, a sink or a shower or something that hasn't been run for a while, those traps might be evaporated too and you got sewer gas coming in them as well. So all those things have to be flushed and filled and put back in operation. And at the same time with the sewer lines drying out, some of the stuff in the sewer pipes is also dried up and as it gets wet again, it may lead to more clogging and different issues in the sewer itself. And so what you're saying really is if I'm a business owner or someone in charge of the health and safety of the occupants through the plumbing system, just don't walk in there and start turning things on and assume everything's okay. There are specific steps and protocol to follow. Well, there's no national standards, but there's common sense things. A lot of stuff we're going through that we've never dealt with, we don't understand. We do know how to flush a building and we know how to turn the water on safely. Professional plumbers can come in, flush your water system, flush your drain system, get you up and running safely. So again, we don't have a one health concern developing into another health concern, just based on not doing some simple common sense things and having a professional review and make sure your system's up and running properly. Sure, well I know from previous shows there are a number of key people who keep our water system safe. And is it important in your opinion for everybody to be on the same page when we're talking about reopening these buildings that have been closed for an extended period of time? I think it's really important that people be on the same page and there are really no protocols on how to do it properly. So that's part of what we're talking about today is try to get expectations and everybody on the same page. So between the inspectors, the plumbers, the consumers, the business owners, what should you expect? What should you think about? And as we come out of one health concern, let's not create another one by not being smart about how we open up these buildings. Sure. Well, on today's show, hopefully we're going to provide some of this great information, some sound recommendations for people to safely reopen their plumbing system in these buildings. Well, I appreciate you coming on today's show and Plumber 75 taking the lead on this topic because at the end of the day, we're on uncharted territories and we want to keep our communities safe. Yep. No doubt about it. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, Jim, great to see you again. Great to have you back on Building Wisconsin, although I wish you were under better circumstances, that's for sure. But since you're a City of Milwaukee plumbing inspector and one of the key people in keeping our water system safe, we wanted to lean on your expertise and your experience as we talk about safely reopening and flushing out plumbing systems in these buildings that have been either shut down or underutilized for an extended period of time. And so maybe you could take us through this building here at Plumber 75 and take us to some endpoints and heighten our awareness. Sure, well here's a very common fixture we see and we inspect at the time of install for proper operation. Now this has been sitting a while. One of the first concerns is has the water evaporated in the trap? That can be a dangerous situation that you could run into. And by the trap you're talking about when it goes down the drain, the right. little trap down there. And why is a trap important and why does it need to be filled? Well, what that does is it maintains a little bit of the clean water at the end of the use and it corks off basically the plumbing system. So the smells, gases do not back up. So when it's not used, Flushing is going to be necessary. And probably lean on the manufacturer's recommendations as far as if there's any endpoint filters on there as well that need to be changed? There's going to be guidelines from your state and even the water utility, but the filters for sure. Again, a professional will be able to take that apart and replace that for you as you're charging this up for reuse. Okay, well that's one endpoint and there's numerous ones in a building. We're right next to a women's and men's bathroom. Why don't we go inside because there's lots of plumbing in there. So in here, Stu, this basic commercial bathroom, uh, we have the toilets in the stalls here. Now these are flush valve type toilets. 
So you're not just going to come up and flush these things after a month or so of non-use because you could release some airborne pathogens that are going to be highly toxic and it's going to be a very dangerous situation. Yeah, you know, when I was preparing for the show, I was reading up that when you go to first flush a water closet or a toilet, you want to make sure the lid's down or it's covered up because exactly that, you can release some danger into the air. Right, and there's definitely professionals involved in this process and they got to be concerned about protecting themselves with, you know, personal protective equipment and, and doing this properly. They may have to take this apart to get the water flow because in today's world there's a lot of water conservation fixtures and the flow is the big thing to get the stagnant water out of the pipes and even scour the pipes to a degree so gallons per minute coming out of these things is a very big concern okay so you have the water closets back there what about the urinals urinals are similar again they don't use that much water but trap seals are an important thing that typically most building professionals and plumbers maintain because they know if it's not being replenished it needs to be addressed but the same thing here, it may have to be taken apart so you can get the volume of water out of that system and, and have a proper flushing procedure that works. Sure, a couple of great cases in point of why I personally would lean on the expertise of a professional contractor to make sure it's done correctly and not just good enough. Now over here we have a couple of touchless sinks. So you turn it on, you know, and it goes, but there's very low flow, is that a cause of concern? Yeah, these obviously people can see that not much is coming out of that restrictive aerator and maybe taking off that aerator is not going to be enough to get that flow again. So you may have to pull this fixture out and flush that out of there. And again, you know, that's a, a plumbing professional who's going to address that for you properly. Now you touched on the uh, aerator. Are aerators important to also sanitize? Yeah, you'll be cleaning those out and sanitizing. There's going to be guidelines from the state and the water purveyor that's going to help you with this. Sure, I know on our Building Wisconsin website, we also have some helpful recommendations as far as flushing out a system, reopening up buildings as well. Okay, so this is a basic commercial bathroom. Any other areas in a building like this that we might need to be concerned about? Well, I believe here, we have an ice machine that we could look at which is a very important piece of equipment and perhaps maybe a floor drain we can talk about as well. That sounds good. So in here Stu we have a hospitality bar. That's going to be common. There's restaurants, taverns, many places opening back up so there's some common fixtures here that we want to look at. So this one is an ice machine and they've been using this but buildings where this has been sitting as ice should be thrown away. And this should be thoroughly sanitized, cleaned with their normal procedures that they were doing probably daily previously. Sure, and then since it's hard wired or hard plumbed, I should say, yeah. it needs to be flushed out too, right? Absolutely. Back in here you can see it, but there's an open pipe. That will probably be, have to be opened up on the supply to flush that out, and then a new filter installed. There's no sense in trying to know how long this one was used or how much water has gone through it. It's been stagnant now for a long time. It's very restrictive it's time for that to be changed. Sure, well, I always say it's better to err on the side of caution, and, and more flushing is better than less flushing, especially in this time. Absolutely. Okay, you mentioned floor drains. I see a floor drain down here. Right. Why are those so important? Well, we mentioned before, there's not something that's typically replenishing the, the supply to this to get into that trap to seal this off from the sewer system. So very important, that's gonna have to be thoroughly flushed. Sure, and then one other thing I noticed in this particular setting, a four compartment sink and how many different settings like this exist in our communities and you're saying it's of the utmost important that they're flushed and cleaned properly. Sure, obviously there's many businesses that are going to have something just like this. So the same procedures, they got to make sure that they're going to get some water flow through here, a lot of GPMs to clean out that supply system and again you have multiple traps that need to be replenished as well. Yeah, not to mention the aerator on there, clean, right. disinfect it. And I mean, we're just scratching the surface on this one building. You think of the hundreds and thousands of them in our state and in our country that need to be re reopened. I hope people are getting the gist of it, that it's very important that we lean on experts' advice and not create a new problem by not flushing these correctly. So get out there, get the information off either Building Wisconsin website, other websites out there, and talk to your professional plumbing contractor if you need assistance. Yeah, absolutely. I think if they start at the main and they go through all their points of use and you know, know their building and, and realize the things that they may not think about, it'll work out good for everyone. Jim, I appreciate you coming on today's show. Thank you.
Well, Dan, what a beautiful showroom. I love all the ideas for homeowners and business owners alike. But one thing I notice, it's pretty quiet in here. Yeah, you know, with the coronavirus at this point, we actually made a decision to shut the showroom down, to stop um, from the clients coming in that could be infected with the virus or our staff be infected with the virus. Yeah, the showroom shut down. You guys are still out there providing essential services on the plumbing side. We are. I, mean, I always say people keep on flushing, so they're going to need us to keep that water flowing for them. And, you know, as I walked around here, a lot of these fixtures are operable. So when you do reopen, Prior to that, you're going to have to safely flush out your system, right? Yeah, that's something we take very seriously of how we're going to do that. We have a plan in place of how we're going to um, start at a certain fixtures at the lowest point and work our way up to make sure that we completely replace all that bad water with good water. Sure, and that's really why we wanted to come out here and catch up with you as a plumbing contractor experienced in this. When somebody says, hey, I need to safely flush out my system, let's walk through that process. How does it all start? With that plan you're talking about? The plan is very important and we recommend if someone would have a floor plan or some sort of isometric drawings of their plumbing that we can utilize that to make sure that we, we do the proper process when we do flush the water out. Sure, probably more likely in a newer building. What happens if you have an older building and don't have a plan? Yeah, like this building here does not have a plan but we know how the plumbing was ran. We can take a look through our experience of how the plumbing was piped back years ago and flow that water out to make sure that we're flushing the system out in a proper order. And then you started a specific area where the water comes in, in say a janitor's sink? That works ideally. And because there's a high flow rate of water when you open up that faucet, a lot of water comes out there very quickly. So we can flush that water out to that point. We know we have a good fresh start from there. Okay, and then you just kind of emanate out from that area, stick to that level, then get to the next yeah. and the next? Correct. We start with the cold, flush out the cold, work our way up and work our way out, and then we'll do the hot. And But we have to take in consideration for different water heaters and water treatment systems that we have to flush those out as well. Okay, so it all starts with a plan. Number two, you need to flush out these fixtures. What exactly is meant by flushing out or disinfecting the different fixtures? Are there any in here you could actually walk us through? Yeah, I have some right over here I could show you. Oh, this is perfect. Even though it reminds me of a nice residential setting, a toilet, a sink, those are all integral components to any business, any building in our state. So when we're talking about proper flushing of them, it's not just going and turning the handle and flushing the toilet. Yeah, there's a couple of things you have to consider about on the toilet. Of course, you have water that sits in the bowl itself, and we got to deal with that. we got to flush that water out. Mm -hmm. And then also there's water that sits in the tank itself to re that refills the bowl. We have to flush that water out. And we also have the water that's coming in that supply that. We have to flush out that water line that's coming to the toilet. So something as simple as a toilet, <laughs> there's quite a bit that needs to be done. And I remember reading somewhere, make sure you have the lid on the toilet. Yes, yeah, you know, if, because if you're flushing water, water's moving around, you get some droplets in the air, and that can cause a problem. Okay, so you want to have personal protection equipment on anytime you're doing any of this. Now, what about over here at a sink? Everybody has a sink. You got to flush that out? You, you definitely have to flush out the sink as well. And, of course, the best way to do that, um, you do have the sink, you have the aerator at the end here, and that helps the, the flow of water come out at a nice uh, pace and a nice flow, a sure. nice feel. So you just take the aerator off, and then we recommend, of course, just turning your water on and we recommend full force as much as you can. And just one side at a time, the cold do, first. Yes, do, do the cold first and just let it run. Now how long to let it run, it, it, that's the question out there because there's some engineering on the back side. It can depend on the flow rate of water, the size of the pipe that's feeding this water, the distance that it's away from where the last point of fresh it water sounds was. to me like it really comes back to that master plan that you've done at the beginning. Correct. So when we do a master plan, we can say, okay, this fixture would need to be flushed out for a minimum of 15 minutes. We'll have that all predetermined. Sure. And somebody might chuckle and say, 15 minutes? Well, it could be at least 15 minutes in some applications, sometimes over an hour, I've read. And we recommend, I mean, our, our philosophy here is do everything that's reasonable and a little bit more. Well, that takes care of the toilet and the sink. And I look over here and you have a nice shower stall. And I look down and I see the floor drain. We're, we've been talking about supply side, but the floor drain is equally, if not more so important. Well, definitely. I mean, you have to worry about the, where the water goes, of course, and then the, the, if that ever was evaporated, you have the sewer gases coming back up into the property, and again, that can create a whole other issue. Out and there. earlier in the show, I remember, I think it was Jim was saying, when you fill that back up, make sure you have personal protection equipment on, because you could splash some of that, get it airborne. So probably a good idea to go around all the floor drains initially and 
you know, make sure those are all carefully filled. Definitely. Floor drains and any of the drains out there. Of course, when you're flushing the water out, that's going to replenish the drains of all the sinks and the toilets and, and such. But okay. the floor drains that don't have an extra fixture of faucet that's hooked up right to it, you have to be um, very conscious of those. Again, we're talking a little about simple stuff here, but at the same time, rather complicated when it's in that big master plan. Okay, so back to the shower. I think about health clubs. I think about hotels. I think about being on vacation. And there's a lot of businesses now that have on-site showers for their employees. Is there anything to worry about? Well, there's a lot of different things that are going on here that we have to be very concerned about. And the, the airborne pathogens, more so on a fixture like this or a faucet like this, because when you turn that faucet on, the water spraying out there, a lot of spraying going on, a lot of activity with that water. So when you come back into a uh, building that's been underutilized or yeah. closed for uh, an extended period of time, don't just go turn on the shower. Correct. First thing you should do is get a garbage bag. Really? Yeah, get a garbage bag and, and what you want to do is take this garbage bag and actually cover the end of the, the shower head and make sure it's nice and tight. You can cut a hole at the bottom of that bag, of course, and just turn on the water and flush that, wa that, that system out through that garbage bag. Oh, and so the garbage bag around that would stop any airborne pathogens from getting outside of that immediate area in being contained in the bag. Correct. Well, you know, it's been great. We've just scratched the surface. We've showed a couple examples of what to do. For more information, we have a lot on our website, buildingwisconsintv.com, and I know the CDC, EPA, lots of different water entities out there are here to assist business owners and consumers alike. And I really appreciate you coming on and representing professional plumbing contractors. Well, it's my pleasure. Well, Justin, great to have you on today's show. You're with J.F. Ahern, a very reputable plumbing contractor. As a matter of fact, you guys have been around for over 140 years. And the reason we're excited to have you on today's show is because what we're covering is right up your alley. We're teaching people how to properly and safely reopen their plumbing systems and buildings in the, you know, as this pandemic hopefully winds down. Yeah, so I am a safety business partner for Ahern, and I'm also a Wisconsin master plumber. And I've been working in the plumbing industry for over 15 years. Uh, with that, I've also been teaching for 10 years, and those have all been plumbing-related courses. Uh, through my teaching, some of the things I've got involved with is the ASSE 12000 program, and what that program covers is ICRA, which is Infectious Control Risk Assessment, and water quality. In that water quality, we really focus in on Legionella and how to prevent that in a plumbing system. So I've heard the term Legionnaire's disease. Is that what Legionella really is? I mean, can you fill us in on what it is? What Legionnaire's disease is is when you have water that contains Legionella in it and it becomes an aerosol and you aspirate it. So you breathe it in and it gets in your lungs. Uh, when that happens, that's when you can contract Legionnaire's disease. Oh my gosh, now is that a serious disease? I mean, is it that dangerous to anybody who gets it? It is a serious disease and the CDC has said that one out of 10 people that get it actually pass away from it. And if you acquire it in a healthcare facility, they say one out of four pass away from that. Oh, so that is cause for alarm, that's for sure. Now, is it fair to say that in this climate that we're dealing with, buildings, different structures being underutilized, being shut down for an extended period of time, are the conditions ripe for Legionella to occur? They really are. Some studies have shown that they believe 50% of buildings have low levels of Legionella coming in from city supplies, where it's, it's undetectable not going to cause any damage. But when you have three things happen, that can cause that Legionella to grow and that's where it becomes bad. So if that Legionella is present, the triggers are going to be temperature. So if the water temperature gets between 77 degrees and 108 degrees, now it's going to start growing. And then the other two triggers with it is bacteria and organic material. So an old piping system, there's biofilm in there, there's going to be bacteria, there's going to be dirt, that organic material. So now with this shutdown, we're bringing in that temperature range as water systems are sitting stagnant and not being used. So cold water is not staying cold, hot water is not staying hot. And it seems to me those are just some of the areas that Legionella might be lurking. I mean, is it fair to say endpoints like Jim Cosmaco, the plumbing inspector we had on, was talking about? Maybe, um, you know, different aerators on the end of faucets or in showers? Yep, so, you know, it could grow in those spots. Um, and that endpoint is where we're going to get that exposure. So that's where I look at it is if I do a risk assessment on a building, and we can use our building as an example. You know, we've never been completely shut down, 
but we've been partially shut down. We have a fitness center in here, and that fitness center hasn't been being used. So that's an area that could be concerned. It all depends how everything's piped with different buildings, but if it's not being used, it's sitting, it's getting stagnant. So now we open right back up, don't do any precautions, and you have a shower in there. That shower makes it an aerosol and someone could then breathe it in. So you, you wanna make sure you're following the right standards, uh, taking precautions and not just opening your building right back up and potentially exposing your employees, customers, clients along with that. Are there certain buildings in our communities that are more susceptible to others? Or is it fair to say that, heck, even if I have a Northwoods cottage that I'm opening up, outside of a pandemic, I should do it safely? Every building really has the potential. If that water is sitting stagnant, you have that potential for it. Sure, so buildings throughout our communities are susceptible, especially in this situation and these conditions that have made it ripe for Legionella to occur and hopefully we can get the word out there to you know either do it yourself properly or hire a professional get the building properly flushed and safe so we can keep our communities safe and get back to living the high life we enjoy here in wisconsin i tell you it's been great having you on you've done a world of good and heighten the awareness to our viewers thank you thank you Well, Karen, the world sure has changed since we were last on Building Wisconsin last year. And throughout today's show, we've been explaining to the viewer how to safely flush out plumbing systems and reopen buildings that have been either closed or underutilized for an extended period of time. And when I think about flushing out a system, first thing that came to mind was a fire hydrant. Is that essentially what you at Milwaukee Waterworks are doing, is cleaning out the waters to ensure their safety? That's right. So we have almost 20,000 fire hydrants in our Milwaukee Waterworks system, and we hit each and every one of them at least every two years. There are some that we hit annually and some that we regularly, almost nightly, flush to ensure that the water running through there is clear and chlorinated and able to provide safe drinking water to the public. Well, I was amazed when they first turned on the, the flow, it was just brown. It looked really dirty coming out. Is that normal? It is normal. So the water that is in our distribution pipes is flowing and is clear, but the water that's sitting stagnant in the hydrant has a tendency to, to pick up some of that material, some of that metal from the hydrant column itself. So it's very normal when that water first comes out of the hydrant for it to be brown and rusty. Well, you know, that's a great analogy. And if people can visualize that dirty water coming out of the hydrant, that's really what's happening inside the pipes in our buildings. And that's why it's so important to be properly flushing them out. And that's the message, again, that we're trying to get out on today's show. That's right. So as we're flushing our distribution system, we want people to know that if water has been sitting stagnant in their household plumbing or in their building plumbing, that they should be flushing it just as we are here today. Well, we've been focusing more on businesses reopening, landlords out there, anybody in charge of a private business, a private building that's in charge of the health and safety of the occupants, how to properly flush it out. But what about government buildings? I mean, you're in the government, so are you communicating with the various government entities on how to safely either flush their systems or reopen their buildings? Of course, we work very closely with the Department of Neighborhood Services to ensure that we're getting information and resources out to these building owners. But we're also working with our own facilities. So many of our buildings are still operating because we're providing essential services. But we have Milwaukee Public Schools that has been closed and we're working with their facilities managers to ensure that they keep those fixtures running during this closure time, as well as Milwaukee Public Libraries. While many staff are still reporting to the libraries, the facility staff in particular have been fantastic at ensuring their fixtures are being regularly flushed, their cooling towers and HVAC equipment and, and water heaters are running at optimal ranges to ensure that that water is safe continuously and for when they reopen to the public. Well, based on what I'm hearing, you probably don't want to be a procrastinator. You want to get to this, not the night before you're planning on reopening. 
That's absolutely right. So you want to make sure that you're regularly operating those fixtures, you're regularly flushing that system to ensure that if there are fixes that need to happen, you're getting on top of it before your business is ready to reopen. And that you're not letting some of those issues build up. As we chlorinate our water, we want to make sure that that chlorination in that water has the ability to do its job and not allow that bacterial growth to occur. Sure, well we've covered an awful lot of ground on today's show and if I'm a viewer and want more information, more guidance on safely reopening my business, my building, whatever it might be, we have some information on our Building Wisconsin website, but I'm sure you have a plethora of information as well. That's right, there are a variety of resources from the CDC, the EPA, OSHA, the Department of Natural Resources, Department of Health Services, and we have links to all of those as well as additional information on our website at milwaukee.gov water. Well, Karen, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, coming out here and shedding light on the subject. Hopefully next time I see you, it's under better circumstances. I hope so too. Thanks, Stu. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network.